28 minutes from that moment, in the meantime, a brand new Fox poll shows Carly Fiorina and Senator Marco Rubio are gaining ground on the front runners. Donald Trump still leading with Ben Carson close behind. Fiorina and Rubio now tied at third with 9%. Meanwhile, the poll is shedding some light on the rise of the outsider. Republicans are not happy with the GOP. They are not happy with Washington. 62% of people polled saying they felt betrayed by politicians in their own party. Fox News contributor, chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiner, Byron York with me on this. How you doing, Byron? Good morning Good to morning, you. Bill. I just want to you know, make sure you're okay down there. Um, so uh, what do you see in the poll? Trump's lead has maintained. Well, you know, what's interesting is that uh, look at three Fox News polls, end of July, mid-August, today. Uh, Trump's position has stayed remarkably stable, 25, 26 points that whole time. What has changed are, is who is gaining on him. Uh, ben Carson, look at those same polls, goes from 7% to 12% to 18% now. Carly Fiorina from 2% to 5% to 9%. Marco Rubio doubles his support from 4 to 9%. So, so Trump's opponents are closer to him now than they were at that moment when he was really peaking in support. We also asked this question. I, I find this fascinating. We wanted to know from Americans whether or not Trump is too blunt and whether or not he's too mean. 49% say he is. But 44% say we need that. It's not quite 50-50, but it's not too far off, Byron. No, and, and it's certainly enough for him to find 25, 30% uh, in the polls. And remember, he is in a multi-candidate race. He doesn't have to get a majority of the votes. Uh, nobody does in a field this big. The other news in this poll is who is falling away from him. And, you know, that support uh, that, that the others are gaining had to come from somewhere. And the losers uh, in this poll are Jeb Bush, who in that, that couple of month period has gone from 15 to 9 to 7 percent now. He's in the middle of the mm -hmm. pack. And, of course, the biggest loser of all is, is Scott Walker, who was in third place in that Fox poll uh, at the beginning yeah, of August come back, and come now back, is out of the race altogether. Come back to Jeb Bush. Why do you think that movement is taking place, Byron? Well, he has not caught fire on, on the campaign trail, and, and he has had a number of encounters with Donald Trump, both directly and uh, through the media, in which Trump appeared to get the better of him. Uh, there's no doubt the Bush campaign has been somewhat frustrated by Trump's rise. They don't quite know how to counter him. They believe he will ultimately fade. That's a, a rock-solid belief, but they don't know how to make that happen. And I think uh, Bush has definitely looked kind of in a second place role hmm. to Donald Trump for the last two months. Uh, let, let's just go over one more thing. If, if Donald Trump were not in this race, this is what you find. You find Ben Carson at 24 percent, Marco Rubio at 12, Fiorina at 11 tied with Cruz, and then Jeb Bush at 10, Christine Huckabee down the line. He has given no signal of concession. In fact, just in the last week, he said, this is a long haul and you better be ready for it. But does that tell you anything if Trump were to second guess his campaign. Well, you know, it tells you that outsider impulse that you were talking about at the beginning of this segment is still there. So you've got the, the Fiorina and the Carson, two very different candidates, but neither has held public uh, office before, still attracting a lot of voters. Then you've got the, the Rubio, who perhaps has that appeal to uh, uh, ability to appeal to both sides in the party, the party that wants the outsiders and the party that values some insider experience as well. So you, you could see if, if Trump were out of the race, you still would have uh, an insider-outsider confrontation, although it would be more focused than it is right now with this giant field. Wow, fascinating. Thank you, Byron. Good to see you. And Thank you, both. Enjoy the final hours of Pope Francis in your city. Big okay? day. Byron, yeah, indeed it is. Thanks. In Washington, D.C., where we go back to Martha now. Well, quite literally, the Pope is in the house uh, behind us, and the excitement is clearly building on Capitol Hill. It's a 